My name is Jeff Martin. I'm an artist. I live in Melbourne, Australia. I'm going to visit 12 of the world's best restaurants. So I'm going to go to those restaurants, spend one night there. I'm going to sketch the kitchens during service and try and make a painting based on that experience. So leaving the hustle bustle of Paris, heading to the country, jumping on a train to make my way to a town called Rodez. I'm now going to the restaurant of Michelle and Sebastian Bra. I had no idea it was going to take this long. You know, you can have a restaurant in the path of tourists in a location where people just walk past and say, oh, that menu looks nice, I'll go in there, which is kind of a haphazard approach. When you have a destination restaurant, you have to make a choice. You have to have something that makes people want to come and find you. And Michelle and Sebastian Bra have certainly done that. It's famous within the industry, but it's very isolated in the south of France. It's not the best weather. This is the home of a very special product, a knife. Oh, cool. I have one of the bottle openers, but I've never seen the, I've never seen the selection from the factory. But these guys don't compromise on the quality. Everything takes a lot of time and they care about their product. We really want to make everything uh, on site in the village. Yeah. So here you have the blades, you see? The steel we use for, for the blades. And where does the steel come from? Uh, from Assyri Bon Pertuis, which is in France. Okay. Our supplier is in France. So it's a complete... Everything is made in France. How many knives do you make a year? A year, uh, 120,000 or 150,000, it depends, between these. We ship our knives in uh, 80 countries. In, the, in Australia, uh, we know who you are. today. You, you yeah, know yeah, us. we know who you yes. are. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. How do you get up there? Michel and Sebastian Bra. Voila. It's beautiful. Hope being kept waiting. C'est une histoire de famille, mais c'est aussi l'histoire de l'histoire d'un pays, parce que et Michel et moi avons eu une relation euh, très intimiste avec euh, avec notre région, avec l'Aubrac. Jeune, moi enfant, il m'a fait partager beaucoup de ces euh, de ces valeurs qui se rapprochent ben, de, de la nature, de cette région d'Aubrac. On a partagé beaucoup de, de moments ensemble, euh, moi enfant, lui adulte et aujourd'hui nous adultes, on continue à partager ces moments dans euh, dans, dans la nature, des moments de des moments de convivialité, de, de proximité, aussi bien euh, en cuisine qu'à l'extérieur. Et je crois que ça, c'est ce qui nous rapproche aujourd'hui euh, aujourd beaucoup en plus, en plus de la cuisine. Non, la relation n'a pas été franchement difficile parce que j'ai eu la chance d'avoir euh, des parents très avant-gardistes d'un point de vue architecture, d'un point de vue conception culinaire, d'un point de vue management. 
Et euh, aujourd'hui, moi, je me sens en complète, euh, en complète adéquation avec ce qui a été mis en place ici depuis longtemps. Donc, bien sûr, on continue à faire évoluer la maison, on continue à vivre avec, avec notre temps. Si je stand ici, c'est OK Now he needs to get in the fridge. If you're a chef that does the kind of food that Michelle and Sebastian do, you are demanding respect, you're demanding time. So somebody sits down, looks at the view, looks at the plate, and just takes it all in, and nobody's rushing. They don't have to jump in a cab because they can't. The thing is that the rapport we have with the personnel, we feel it on the level of communication between us. Moi, il y a longtemps que je joue ici, mais on ne m'a jamais appelé chef, on m'a toujours appelé par le prénom, parce qu'il y a un rapport entre les hommes qui est beaucoup plus fraternel. On n'est pas dans un corps militaire, oui chef, bonjour chef, non, ça, ça n'existe pas. I'm looking at this half of the kitchen because it's smaller than that half of the kitchen. This is just insane. How I'm going to explain space with this is tiles. The roof is the important thing. By bringing the roof into the painting, I'll be able to show distance. And the more those lines go like that, actually, if they're closer together, the more that will feel. Look, it's a long way away. On a construit ici euh, il y a bientôt 20 ans. Bon, on, avait la on a eu la chance aussi, l'opportunité euh, de pouvoir construire sur un site, sur une montagne où il n'y avait rien. Euh, donc on a beaucoup d'espace euh, aux environs du restaurant, donc ça nous permet de, voilà, de pousser les murs facilement. Et comme on trouve la cuisine pas encore assez grande, cet hiver on va pousser les murs encore un petit peu. <laughs> this is the biggest kitchen I've ever been into, and they're going to expand. I, I'm just, is having this much room a hindrance? Raw. This place is big. It's kind of like all that space out there, all that space in there, and uh, lots of green. The green's really cool. I like seeing a new colour in a kitchen. I've never done a green kitchen before. C'est la nature, c'est la couleur de la nature. Alors bientôt, euh, avec la, la couleur des feuilles de l'automne, on va bientôt tous penser à passer en jaune euh, là, ou orange. 46, eh. euh, et j'en ai pas pour le bœuf. Le bœuf, je te fais de celle-là, non The Brau family having dinner on the table behind us, which has been set up, and then there's staff quarters where the staff are eating. Everybody's getting some energy before the service starts. And there's also staff quarters. But it's kind of nice to see the family eating together within the kitchen. I assume this is a ritual. We're getting ready. I love the hats. Start the restaurant. That's the drawing from the other side. Don't like it at all, but it shows me where things are. Looking at a few things, the first word in my book is big, then followed by green as far as aprons and some of the benches. But how do you communicate the scale of this onto a canvas? How do you show somebody what this space is like? I'm thinking too much about the painting, and I need to just sketch and try and capture what I see. What does one do with an antler? I think it might sit on the table as a display. It is very relaxed. People are not about to rush off and I don't think they're worried about catching up with their girlfriend or boyfriend in between service or after work. 
You're so far from everything, you've got to be focused on your job. And it's a very calm kitchen. Jeune qui vient ici pour prendre des recettes, c'est pas la peine qu'il vienne. Les recettes, je les lui envoie par internet. S'il vient ici, euh, c'est pour partager, euh, partager une expérience, euh, partager euh, ben, un certain savoir-faire, partager un coin d'Aubrac. Comment Un savoir-être. Un savoir, un, oui, partager un savoir-être. Nous, cette relation, like euh, pour a... nous, avec nos, nos équipes, est très importante. Donc... <laughs> Looks like outside. It's beautiful. Bon appétit. Thank you. Ah, I get to use these. Yeah. We're eating a vegetable garden given to us by Sebastian before we get stuck into the service. This is a bit of a treat. You get the sense that somebody's just walked out the back door, gone out to the garden and picked the ingredients up. That's the one from this angle. That's the painting because you can see the whole second half of the kitchen and the vertical lines and the horizontal lines of the roof and the floor will give it that, that depth. And I'll have to use a lot of reference for photographs, but then I've got to worry within that how I bring people in, and that's where everyone is. Now that the pace is picking up in the kitchen, you notice that nobody's bumping into each other, like you're not constrained by space. The dance is different. The nice thing about people wearing hats is when they're leaning forward, you can see their hair, and they're leaning right forward, so it gives you a, a hat to give heads more direction. For continuity, I always paint on the same size canvas. That way, it pulls the whole show together, despite how big or small the kitchens are. Small kitchens translate really well to that canvas because I get to focus on detail. Large kitchens simply convey space and the detail becomes a stove instead of a bell. Pablo Neruda, who had something fabulous, I think, was that a man who was not an infant had ceased to live a little bit. He's not capable of being angry. He's not capable of being angry. No, that's Einstein. No, but the notion of de jouer, c'est-à-dire que c'est la notion d'émerveillement. Tous les jours, il y a quelque chose de nouveau qui t'étonne, que tu as envie de transcender, voilà. Et ça, tout est lié un peu. So we stayed in Rodez, and then um, and we drove to the restaurant, and then what did we do? We drove back, and we drove back this morning, and then I forgot my laundry bag, so I drove back to Rodez, and then I just drove back to the restaurant again. How many trips is that? Yeah. Six? Yeah. Six journeys. You didn't happen to notice the speed camera sign, did you? Big sign in front, motorbike symbol, car symbol, and uh, brackets. I thought, what's that mean? I slowed down to 140 when I saw the camera. I find myself with a little bit of time between restaurants and on a hangout at a friend's place in the south of France. Just sketching and drawing and thinking about what I've seen, getting ready to go to Italy, which is a flight in a few days' time. It's very hard to not lose your childhood, not lose your observation skills. It's very hard to break away from what you see and what you want to see. The reason I draw, and I draw mundane things, is so I see them. If I take a photograph, it's just a photograph, it gets put away and I never really look at it properly. If I draw something, I've seen it. Ah, oh, you can see her windows. Yeah. Which ones? Um, look, there's that. There's that building. And can she see you from here? No. You can't wave? No. <laughs> 
one direct flight to Venice today and we've missed it. Somehow Hertz think we work for uh, Air France. So now we're in a C-Class Mercedes driving to Venice from, uh, from Nice. My greatest concern is that the restaurant's expecting me this afternoon and uh, I've got a few hundred kilometres to put under my belt before now and then. After an exhausting drive across Europe, we've arrived in the city of Padua and what a contrast it is from the relaxed countryside of southern France. The chef's five minutes away. We could have had one less ticket. What we'll do is just go straight in there and start. When Massimo took over the kitchen in 1994, he took over from his mother, who already had one Michelin star. He took it to three. At the age of 22, he was the youngest ever chef to hold three hats. He's our signature book. <laughs> it's a like signature book. You know that many restaurants have the book for the signature. We have the wall. In uh, this location, this building, because many guests ask us uh, why you are here in not a very nice uh, place, because outside is a very is a, an uh, industrial area. Because uh, this one was uh, the site of uh, our grandfather. He started here. After him, uh, the our parents, and after us. So this is uh, uh, where we are from. I love coming into a new kitchen and seeing things and exploring someone's space. It's kind of like going into their studio. I think the pace at which we've traveled here is coming across into the um, into the work because I feel rushed. And everybody understands everybody understands chaos, especially in this industry. In our job we spend a lot of time during the day or during the week all together. Is uh, more the time that we spend here than the time that we spend in our family. We work uh, with the pleasure to make uh, our possibility of expression. Uh, so the new concept of the restaurant, uh, uh, the new idea that uh, we use uh, is uh, always uh, made with uh, not the idea of business, but uh, of idea that we are the guest. We have some dishes that don't change, that is the classic uh, of our restaurant. And uh, a lot of the dishes change uh, for the season. That is always in the same line, that is uh, very light, very fresh. Uh, we work a lot with the smell, with the touch. French food is very geared towards sitting down and having courses presented. Italian food does the same, but traditionally breaks your vegetables and your meat up into different components. Always interested in seeing how a fine dining restaurant interprets a tradition and how you stick to the tradition, but also impress people and take them to somewhere they haven't been before. We work with the sense to arrive to give the another uh, shape to the food that is uh, the shape that you need. So one dish can be different for each people. Now I've kind of got the layout worked out. It won't be not unlike um, Chateaubriand because I'll, I'll have to go above just to kind of get the angle, but not as much. And the beautiful thing is those beautiful, there's black walls in there with copper pots hanging on them. Who doesn't want to paint that? Your black reflection, an underlying of black. Um, lots of copper in the kitchen, everybody wearing hats. 
I'm standing against that wall there, which is black. That wall's got the black copper pots. I'm bending the kitchen there, that's that middle section. Middle island there. Back door, which has got more chefs out there. Rotisserie is really cute, so that's almost a note for myself to make sure I take a photograph of it and a rough sketch. You know, it's a it's a classic old rotisserie. Mango's going to be pretty nice too. Just some little little fun stuff happening in there. That's where I get my kicks, doing little things like that. It's great when chefs look through your sketchbooks. It's kind of like... Um, it's funny, they don't know why you're here, they let you in. And they, uh, they kind of all just put up with you, but then when they... You hand them a sketchbook and they go through it, everybody gets a bit excited, and then they see the other restaurant names. They all got very animated. This one is my signature, and uh, is uh, only to remember me that I must to be a child. <laughs> I've never had a chef sign my book before. Fantastic. Grazie. <laughs> <laughs> I don't go out of my way to eat dessert, but they insisted I have this one dessert. Now comes this deck of cards, and they're the 12 tastes of childhood, and then out comes this platter and the platter's put in front of you and they are matching the cards, the numbers one through 12. What's incredible about this is the play, the play on childhood and the notion of just taking people to an area where they're uncomfortable, but the clever thing is all the flavors combined. They all meld together to create an experience, which is almost like a mini degustation in itself. Children probably have understand all and we spend all the life to understand at the end <laughs> that uh, was more interesting to be a child. Is there another funny thing about you're an artist? You know, I, I ring up from Australia and I say, I want to come and spend a night in your kitchen and paint. I'm late because I've missed a flight from France. They say, here's your keys to your room upstairs, go upstairs and stay. The next day, sit down to a digger station meal, and then they say, thanks for having us and there's no bill. Just the generosity of, of the true hospitality of some of these people, and they're just like, you know. So leaving Europe and all the traditional foods and all the excitement and the beautiful things that I've seen, I now am on my way to the Estates where I'm going to more kitchens, all listed in the world's best restaurants.